Shalom Akim. <clears throat> First and foremost, I want to give all praises and all glory to the true and living power, which is Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Raka Kwadash. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father. Yahweh Shai is the true name of His only begotten Son, and there is no God beside them. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who definitely rule well, who've taught us His truth. And honors and salutations to the elect document doing these works in sincerity and in truth. In this lesson, man, I want to get into um, how, well, I just want to add to uh, Apostle Tahar and his response to uh, Vocab Malone, you know, constantly trying to weasel his way in to uh, the salvation of Israel. So, you know, you know, the Apostle mentioned our Romans, the ninth chapter is, is like the head cutter to uh, uh, end all that madness. And I just wanted to add another uh, scripture as well that I like to go to that just seals the deal. You know, when it comes to uh, 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 who, who who salvation is for. And this is Second Ezra chapter 7, and I'll start at verse 6 and read into it. It says, There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. And of course, this city is a, is, a, is a parable for the kingdom of heaven. All right. The full of all good things is the the the, the pleasures evermore. All right. Let me let me uh, uh, search that scripture up real quick. OK, because this city is full of all good things, man. That's speaking about the pleasures evermore. This is uh, Psalms 16, verse 11 it says "Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Okay. And let me just get another quick precept as well. In the book of Psalms, just to show how that city is full of all good things. And it's gonna <clears throat> and that city is gonna be amazing, represent the kingdom. Psalms 84 and 10. It says, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my power than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. All right. And all things are written aforetime for our learning. So because I personally like to apply that unto these dudes today that sell out. They sell their soul so that they could dwell in the tents of wickedness, man, amongst the wicked. All right. Which is Esau, Edom and the rest of the two third disgusting a, a nasty club of the things that they do for their riches and fame. Okay, so let's go back to the main scripture and continue to read into it. Build it up. It says, verse 7, the inch, So the entrance thereof is narrow and is set in a dangerous place to fall, like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. You see that? And I, and I, and I, man, and this just goes hand in hand. With the scriptures, man. So don't listen to people that say the Apocrypha isn't part of, of the Bible. Because even when you get an original 1611 King James Version, guess what comes right in there? The Apocrypha. Okay? So, this path is the same path that speaks about how narrow, uh, uh, narrow is the, uh, I mean, uh, the straight gate. Okay? Let me just get it real quick. It's the same thing, that straight gate, that narrow path. This is Luke 13 and 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Okay. Let's get it. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. See, so it's it's narrow. All right, there's there's limited room for error. So you have to be fully concentrated, so that you don't slip up and make a grave mistake and fall to the right hand in that fire or fall. So the left hand in that deep water. So it, it takes extreme focus and extreme seriousness to enter 
and to, to, to make it to that city where it's full of all good things. So stay with me, man. Because it's uh you know, it's gonna it's gonna gonna get into it, man. Brothers already know, but this is like what I like to get, uh, get into as well. You know, to to seal the deal for who who saved. So verse nine it says, "If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance?" Here's the point, verse ten. And I said, "It is so, Lord." Then said he unto me, "Even so also is Israel's portion." You can't get around that either, man. You cannot get around that. You know, I, I went in I went in depth a little bit to the whole kingdom of heaven, brought out precepts for the kingdom of heaven, just for it to say in verse 10 who who whose portion it is. Okay? Just for it to say in verse 10 who who uh, uh, who's this city for? Alright? And it's another thing, it's an inheritance, man. Alright, so I, I um wanted to get into the word portion because as I said, even so is Israel's portion representing the the uh the kingdom. Alright, that city where it's full of all good things representing the kingdom, and then it went on to say that is Israel's portion. So let's get into the definition of the word portion in its right context. When you look at number two, it says a person's destiny or a lot. See? So that's Israel's destiny to enter into that kingdom where it's full of all good things, man. You see? That's Israel's fate. That's Israel's fortune, the nation of Israel's luck, and the nation of Israel's heritage. Okay? Not everybody's. That's not everybody's that's not everybody's destiny, man. That's not everybody's fate. Let's get into destiny real quick. The hidden power believed to control what will happen in the future of fate. Okay. And then when you look at verb number one, it says divide something into parts or share out. See, so that city, that, that kingdom where it's full of all good things is going to be divided into parts for who for the nation of Israel as it once was okay um what's that scripture in uh Deuteronomy uh I think Deuteronomy 32nd chapter the 6th verse oh Deuteronomy 32 and 8 it says when the most high divided to the nations their inheritance when he separated the sons of Adam he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For the for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. You see that? So the Lord set up the borders within Israel. Okay. And then each tribe had their own borders within the land of Israel. And then the Lord gave everybody else their land. Allowed a lot of everybody else to have their land outside of that. But this same thing is coming back. Okay. When we when we divide something, the something is what? The kingdom of heaven, this the the, the which is the land of Israel, and share it out into twelve different portions, man. Alright, for the twelve different tribes. That's who it's for. Okay? And then even when you when getting back into the scripture, when you look at Look up inheritance. Once again, second Edges chapter seven verse nine. If the city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, so the city was given unto a man. Who's that man? Jacob, which is uh, uh uh the twelve tribes of Israel, for an inheritance. When you look up the word inheritance, it says a thing that is inherited, a legacy, bequest, endowment, or birthright. See. So the kingdom of heaven is not everybody's birthright. It's the birthright of the nation of Israel, man. Okay. So verse 10 again. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. Okay. 
So this kingdom where is, that's full of all good things, it's Israel's destiny. It's Israel's uh, uh, inheritance. And it's for Israel to divide into 12 different sections, man. Okay, for the 12, representing the 12 tribes of Israel. All right, which is why even when you look in the book of Revelation, it said that uh, uh, Jerusalem is going to have 12 different gates. And Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. So we're going to have 12 different gates for the 12 different uh, uh, tribes. That's okay. Representing the kingdom of heaven. So this is just another uh, uh, something to seal the deal as well, man. You know, that that's, seals the deal for me. To show who's going to be saved, man. All right. And who, and who, and who the kingdom is for. <clears throat> so... But that's not to worry, man, you know, you heathens, man, the scriptures say when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. So when we do come into power through the spirit and power, and, 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 and the Lord begins to execute his law, statute commandments throughout the earth, you're going to see how perfect it is, man. And that's what's going to have you to, to, to eventually rejoice All right, after a thousand years of, of slavery. Okay, for what you've done to to uh, the Lord's people, but after that, once you follow the law, such a commandment, you're gonna see you're gonna live longer, you're gonna have uh, 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 more peace in your life, you're gonna, okay, yeah, so you're gonna live longer and you're gonna have more peace in your life, and and who doesn't want that? Okay, you're gonna have better foods, you're gonna be you're gonna be lit, man. All right, so it's better than this damn devil ruling. So, Lord, wellness edifying with that. I'm going to say shalom.